morning. Once again, good morning. Boy, it's great to see everybody here. My name is Dick Marzano. I'm a Port of Tacoma commissioner. With me is John Creighton, the Seattle Port of Commission Commissioner President, and welcome to the first Northwest Seaport Alliance breakfast. Uh, last year, you may recall, we talked a little bit about it. Well, today we're here. And you know what's really great is I can remember our first breakfast, and we had a, a lot smaller room, and it's great to see so many people here. Uh, I also noticed there was a, a lot of elected officials before we get started, along with congressional staff. Could they please stand up and be recognized? Don't be, come on, please. <clears throat> Thank you very, very much for all the service and the work that you do in helping us and, and all you do for your communities. Uh, we're excited about being here. We're excited about showing what we're doing, uh, the challenges that we face, the opportunities that we have, and we thank you all, our customers, our labor partners, and for all that you do to help us become successful. John Wolf, our CEO, will be explaining some of our challenges and some of our successes already this year. We're busy. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to John. Well, thank you, Dick, and welcome, everyone. It's so great to see so many people here, our customers, our rail partners, shippers, our labor partners, uh, state and local elected officials. really shows your commitment to the region's success. And, um, you know, when we started out looking at how Seattle and Tacoma could better cooperate, it wasn't an easy task. Regional governance is not an easy task. Getting past each port's provincialism and you know, the way we did business for 100 years was not easy. But we, we realized that we had to. The market was changing, the world was changing, and we couldn't keep doing things the same way. We had to change to be successful. And I can tell you now that I'm just so delighted with how things have gone. You know, we've come together, we took about a year, you know, and we had, frankly, we would have t one step forward, two steps back, but we eventually built those relationships, built that trust between the two ports, and I think it's really showing right now. And we're committed to clawing back our market share and be becoming a the premier gateway on the West Coast, you know, through things like, you know, really a focus on our customers, uh, looking at key performance indicators, uh, executive advisory committees and whatnot. And um, I was at TPM last month, and Rolf Jansen with Hapag Lloyd really emphasized that um, customers want ports to be in constant communication with them. And we've taken that to heart. And we can't do this alone, but we want to be there to be your partner, make sure you're successful, and we ask that you also bring your A game because we're serious about becoming a premier gateway on the West Coast. Um, and um, we're serious about our role in terms of creating economic development for our region, and that's why we oppose this little project up in our North Harbor, uh, the arena proposal uh, to bring the Sonics back. And we support bringing the Sonics back. We think that's great for our community, great for economic development in our region. We just don't want that to be on a major freight corridor. So, it, thank you. If you follow the news, you realize that the Seattle City Council is moving forward with looking at vacating a very important street in the whole Soto transportation grid and giving that over to the arena developers. And I urge you, if you haven't already, make your voice heard with the Seattle City Council. It's important that we all work together to make sure that we have a competitive gateway, that we maintain a competitive gateway. And that is a critical issue going forward, that we have strong transportation grids supporting our port terminals. And you know, we really appreciate your business. I can't say that enough. Um, and we're thankful for your commitment to the region. We're thankful that as we work through this process, the two ports coming together into the alliance, that our stakeholders also realize that this, this race to the bottom benefited no one. And we're so thrilled to be here today and working with our customers, our stakeholders, our rail partners, our labor partners, our state and local elected officials, and thank you to our state officials for moving forward with a wonderful transportation package that will finally fund 
uh, 509 and 167 completion. Um, so, you know, we've had some challenges and we will continue to have challenges, but we have a very bright future. And I'm so delighted to introduce our CEO, John Wolf. And uh, we're really pleased that he decided to take the helm of this challenge. And he's doing a wonderful job. So, with no further ado, I want to int introduce John Wolf. Wow, uh, what a group. This is great to see uh, a full house this morning. I want to thank uh, Commissioner Creighton and, and Commissioner Marzano, and really all the commissioners. We have uh, Commissioner uh, Meyer and Petrich here as well. And uh, it's sort of crazy. Uh, we went from, uh, as a staff, five to ten bosses, and uh, sometimes that can get complicated. And uh, certainly uh, with uh, coming together, the Seaport Alliance, the, the two cultures coming together has been interesting. Um, and. Um, Yet our commission, the two commissions, uh, the managing members of this alliance, have been so committed from the outset. When we first came together um, talking about uh, this great idea and this great opportunity, uh, and, and, and recognizing that every great idea has its moment in time, and it was time uh, for us to come together as one gateway, and the 10 of them recognize that. Uh, as Commissioner Creighton mentioned, it was not always easy. Um, there were times in the discussion where um, I thought this might be our last meeting, um, yet they powered through. And, uh, and as a result, today, uh, we are functioning as one team, one gateway. And it's not just the team uh, of the 10 commissioners and the staff. Certainly, that is an important part of the recipe of our success. Yet it's many of you in the room that are part of this team. Uh, we mentioned some that the, the labor partners, they're part of this team. Our uh, terminal operators, many of which are here today, are part of this team. Uh, the uh, the uh, trucking companies, the um, pilotage uh, group, the, the uh, warehouse distribution companies, the railroads, all part of this team. So it's with that that um, I am confident in this uh, this path we're on and the success that I expect that we're going to foresee into the future and experience into the future. Um, John, uh, uh, Commissioner Creighton mentioned uh, best in class service. Um, that's sort of our motto that we've grabbed hold of and I believe it's something that we can own. That uh, our customers into the future will experience us as the gateway that is uh, most focused on our customers most responsive and easiest to do business with. Now, that's easy to say, yet we recognize today we have a lot of work to do to get there. And so we're committed to uh, rolling up our sleeves and making that happen. So um, in a few minutes, you're going to be entertained by John Izzo. He's a, he's a wonderful speaker, and I had a chance to visit with him for a few minutes as we were having breakfast this morning. And I'm really excited about uh, his message, what he's going to share with us today. He was talking to me about the why um, and, and describing um, for our organization, why is it so important, um, and, and our community, why is this so important, this Seaport Alliance? And I wanted to touch on that uh, because uh, I think most of you know in this room that some 40% of the jobs in the state of Washington are somehow tied to trade, 40%. So that's pretty important um, that our gateway function at a high level. Uh, and those are great family wage jobs. Those are jobs that are typically benefited jobs. They're family wage jobs that are supporting this economy, the state economy. Whether it's a Boeing company, a Starbucks, a Costco wholesale, uh, Brown and Haley right here in our backyard, uh, or even the farming community in central and eastern Washington. Uh, all of those companies depend on a highly functional gateway to reach those foreign markets and the jobs that they create within this great state of Washington. So imagine for a moment that um, the ports of Seattle, Tacoma, the Seaport Alliance was less than successful, that we were marginalized. Imagine that for a moment. What would that mean for our economy? 
if 40% of the jobs are somehow tied to trade. That's the why. That's why it's so important for us to be successful. So we've talked about teamwork. I mentioned teamwork uh, amidst an ever-changing industry that we're living in. And trust me, uh, well, you're all living it with us, most of you anyway, and, and it is crazy change. Uh, and we're seeing larger vessels. We're seeing so many changes with the shipping alliances, and we're trying to respond to that. It reminds me of a personal story that um, I hope I can tie to back to the Alliance. Uh, I'll certainly try. Um, some of you may have heard uh, me talk about back in my um, college years, I, I attended PLU right here in, in Tacoma's backyard. And I had the opportunity to play for uh, a wonderful coach, uh, Frosty Westring, which some of you may have even had the opportunity to meet while he was um, still with us. Um, Frosty was an amazing man. Um, for those that didn't play um, for Frosty yet met him, um, I would hear people describe Frosty as, gosh, he's such a nice person and a go-getter and uh, high energy and all of those things. And he is. He was a great man. Um, Frosty was, before he coached, was a um, Marine drill sergeant. So... Um, I'll just put that in the back of your mind for a moment. Um, Frosty knew what it meant to um, provide tough love when needed. And I got to experience that. So um, after my sophomore year, um, we had a pretty successful year uh, in football. We had just played for the national championship, uh, the second of uh, three national championships while well, I happened to be with the program for the four years there. And um, we lost the game, yet you know we finished second in the nation in Division Three football, and we were feeling pretty good about ourselves. And we had a great nucleus of players coming back um, to play uh, my junior year. And so we were really optimistic about the coming year. And I was really excited because I got to play quite a bit as a sophomore, and I was feeling pretty, pretty good about myself. I hadn't really figured out the program that Frosty was running, and uh, was really f more focused on me. And um, after, after the season ended, this uh, defensive uh, coach, uh, my coach, called me in and said, hey, Wolf, um, we need you to switch positions. Um, we, we had a couple guys graduate, and we need to slide you over to this other position. And I'm thinking to myself, no. That, that doesn't work for me. Um, so, I, you know, I was, I was trying to be polite with him, but I just said, you know, that's really not where my focus is. I, I believe I can create the greatest value for this team in the position I've been playing. So I really don't want to switch. And he said, well, I want you to go think about it. So I went home. I went back to the dorm, and, and uh, I get a call that evening from Frosty. Now, Frosty doesn't call a player very often. So I get this call, and... He says, hey, John, I need you to come down to the field house. And I'm thinking, OK, I assume that this is going to be a conversation with Frosty, um, continuing conversation I had with the defensive coach. So I'm thinking through how I'm going to handle this and make sure that I hold my position. Um, I walk into the field house. And this field house is all of this and probably larger. And I walk in. And imagine walking in, and there's um, about 10 or 12 seats um, sitting there in the middle of this large uh, field house, um, side by side with all of the coaches sitting there. And across from those seats is one seat, empty seat. <laughs> it didn't take me long to figure out that was my seat. So I sit down, and um, I won't bore you with the details, but I got to spend about an hour in uh, really not conversation, because I didn't get to say a whole lot, uh, <laughs> listening to um, Frosty give me um, what he would call tough love. Um, that was a defining moment for me in my personal development because what it, what it called out in me is that I was, as Frosty would say, looking in mirrors and not out windows. And I went home and I was really angry, quite frankly, and through that process um, realized that if I was going to stay with this team, I needed to be that servant warrior that he um, he really um, supported. And, and so I came back the, the next day and, and shared with him that I was ready to serve. 
in the way that the team needed. And um, I will never forget that time because Frosty and I um, had a new relationship that even in, as in his um, last days, I was able to spend some time with him and reminisce on those conversations, and that was very meaningful to me. Um, we ended up winning a national championship my senior year. And the championship itself, um, it's maybe sound cliche, but it didn't matter that much. It really didn't. What mattered was the journey that we were on together as a team, that we came together as a bunch of individuals under Frosty's leadership and performed at the highest level we could against, quite frankly, much more talented and larger individuals than ourselves, and we found a way to, to uh, achieve greatness. And I have this ring, I don't wear it because it's pretty gaudy, but it's this, um, this national championship ring, and every once in a while I'll pick it up and, and look at it and, um, and think about what it, it symbolizes for me. Um, it, it symbolizes team first over individual. Um, humility and being a servant warrior. And I think about that for our alliance team. And again, as a reminder, not just our staff and our commission, but the broader team with all the other key stakeholders that make this gateway go. And I think about as we come together as a team and we think about um, beyond ourselves, um, how we can make this gateway the best in class gateway uh, in all of North America. That gets me really jazzed. Um, to play your role, to understand your role on the team and to play it to the best of your ability, to bring your, your A game each and every day. Um, Frosty would call it total release. And um, it, it, it's, it's real and um, you're not always at your best, but you can, as he would say, give it your best shot. Embrace the systems and the discipline and stick to the fundamentals. That was um, part of the success of the PLU program, that there, were, there was a system. And you either got on the bus and you bought into the system or you found your way elsewhere. But most people embraced that and it, it really worked. And, and so I can see that for our organization, it's happening. We're coming around um, our disciplined fundamentals. Um, and I'll talk about a few of those here momentarily. Uh, he talked about not being controlled by fear. We all have fear. Um, I'm sort of feeling a little bit of it right now um, up here. Yet not to be controlled by that and, um, and to um, power through uh, and, and, um, and have that fierce resolve to compete. A strong belief in the team, that, that was paramount. I remember when I first joined the, the program, there was this um, special thing about the program, and it, it, I experienced it through the upperclassmen, that they um, had this belief factor that was so strong that when, it wasn't an arrogance, yet when they walked out on, into the arena, it was as though um, they could conquer the world. And as a younger player, you just sort of bought into that because you respected the, the other guys, and, and, um, and, and it just uh, became part of who you were. And, and so for us, I can see that belief factor happening. Yesterday, I got to sit in uh, what was a, just a great event around uh, peak planning that our team put together. And, um, and I can feel the belief factor really uh, coming into its own with the, uh, the alliance. And, and also, it's really important to have fun. Now, I'm not very good at that. I tend to think about um, you know, when we get a win, what's the next win and that. It's, it's really important to enjoy the trip because as I mentioned, when we won the, that national championship, um, it wasn't about that because glory is fleeting and, um, and, and yet what was really important was the journey with that 70 some guys that um, we trotted out week after week into the arena uh, blood, sweat, and tears together. That was, that was the, uh, the enjoyment, the fun. And so um, we need to find that fun uh, as we take our Seaport Alliance on this journey. So 
I learned a lot from that program. Uh, and uh, under Frosty's leadership, uh, the PLU program has won four national championships. And, um, and he uh, was inducted into the Hall of Fame. He would never, if he were here today, would never tout any of that. Yet he was an amazing man, and I learned a lot from him. And I think much of that, those lessons can be applied very well to our Seaport Alliance team. So the future is now. And uh, it was mentioned earlier, um, we had a, a vessel call here in the Seattle Harbor, the Benjamin Franklin at Terminal 18. The largest vessel in the trade, 18,000 TU vessel, came into our harbor in Seattle. What amazing opportunity for us to display our gateways performance. And it took a team effort. It took you know, the pilots, the, the ship uh, captain, uh, our terminal operator, the labor force, um, and many other stakeholders coming together to make sure that that was successful. So we're going to have opportunities in the future to continue to work as a team to make our gateway successful. So what are we doing to prepare for these great changes in the industry? Well, let me talk about a few. Uh, the commission just took action to approve about a $200 million project in the Tacoma Harbor, what we call the Central Peninsula, to make sure that terminal is big ship ready, that it will be able to handle up to two ultra-large container vessels simultaneously when we complete that project. So we will be big ship ready. We're also focused on Terminal 5 in our North Harbor in Seattle. We're finishing up the permitting for that project. Uh, and the design, and we're working closely with our customer base to find the right business deal, and we're really excited about bringing that terminal into the fold because it is also going to be big ship ready. We're talking about taking our break bulk business and, and the terminal and enhancing that to be really a powerhouse omni terminal. And uh, so we can see a future with the break bulk business as well. We just approved about a $15 million investment in the uh, Tacoma Tide Flats to enhance our rail infrastructure in partnership with Tacoma Rail. We're, we're uh, working on a channel deepening project in the North Harbor that will take uh, the um, waterway ultimately to a level that could be up to 57 feet deep. We just completed in partnership with the city of Tacoma and FIMSIB uh, redevelopment of Port Tacoma Road. And we're working with the city of Fife on the connection of Port Tacoma Road and I-5 to enhance that, that uh, road infrastructure. Our team formed an executive advisory council. And this is a council that is made up of industry experts from all aspects of uh, our business coming together and working on key issues around gateway performance. And we're getting better at that. The trust level is growing. And um, I'm really excited about where that Executive Advisory Council is headed. We also stood up an operations center with the help of our team. Uh, the, this operations center creates greater visibility, transparency to the flow of cargo through the gateway. And that's really important to our customers, that they can understand real time what's happening in every aspect of operations within our gateway. We're talking about developing a near dock CY yard in both the North and South Harbor that will allow us to expand gate hours uh, so that our customers can uh, more efficiently move their cargo in and out of our terminals, uh, whereas today we have congestion in many of those terminals. And we're talking about technology enhancements that will track the movement of the trucks and the cargo through our gateway. So these are just a few of the many things that our, our team is working on. And it's going to be ultimately a game changer for our gateway. We can't do this alone. And uh, as mentioned earlier, it takes a broader team. We need the state legislature. And, um, and, and we had the state legislature and the leadership there uh, recently pass a $16 billion transportation package. 
Uh, we should really applaud the leadership there for that. That is a great thing for the Gateway. Thank you. That's going to allow us to complete SR 509 and 167. And those are critical gateways for freight. The Seattle City Council and the port approved a heavy haul corridor recently in the North Harbor, another great example of teamwork. The City of Tacoma, FIMSIB, and the port partnered to reconstruct Port of Tacoma Road, as I mentioned. We have land use issues, and this is a critically important piece of our uh, recipe of success and one where we need your help. We need to protect our industrial waterfront in both the North and South Harbor. Commissioner Creighton mentioned the Soto District. That is critically important to us, and certainly here in Tacoma as well. We need to protect the boundaries of the industrial uh, area so that we have uh, the freedom to do what we need to do um, in response to our customers' needs. We need to protect and enhance the freight corridors, that first and last mile in and out of the terminals. And we need to continue to work with our federal delegation to uh, reform the harbor maintenance tax. And I want to call out a big thank you to Senator Murray and also to Senator Cantwell in support of that uh, harbor maintenance tax reform. We're making headway. This has been a long time coming and there's more work to be done there. So, Again, great leadership by our senators. So as I wrap up and hand it over to John, 2015 was a big year. It was a challenging year as well, as I mentioned last year when we were talking about uh, some of the challenges on the, on the West Coast waterfront. Yet, all in all, it was a pretty good year. Our cargo volume was up uh, over 2014, uh, thanks to our customers. We have a strong start. Uh, to 2016. Through first quarter, most of our cargo volume is up over last year, and the jobs that come with that are uh, increasing and in the economic activity in and around our gateway. As we continue to build upon the strong teamwork that is already, al already forming within this gateway, um, and we put the gateway first over ourselves, over our self-interests, as we, as we bring our competitive spirit to the job each and every day, as we learn to trust each other, just like a, a strong family has trust in each other, I can imagine the kind of magic that is just around the corner for this gateway. And the byproduct of this high-performing team, that's when championships are won. <laughs> 